One thing for sure, two things for certain. This is Calvin of Team APS. And today I'm here with a deck profile. It's a deck I've been playing now for ooh, probably the last year or so. And it is it and Mistress. Um I think it's really cool the fact you can just put up a big boss monster that's like un unaffected by cards, and that's what really made me pick the deck back up again. But anyway, I'm gonna go straight into it. So first we have one Damori. Basically what it does is it's a negate from the graveyard if I control a Link Sinks or a higher monster. You don't really need more than one because it is definitely a brick. Uh, I've never used them by name. I always say green or wind. So I'm just gonna say green or wind. This is your Foolish Burial. It basically sends your Dan Damori to the graveyard and it's a tuner as well. So when you synchro with it, it can bring back one of the material use. It's supposed to summon it. So it helps uh, extend plays. I know most people like one, but for the purple slash dark, I like two. Uh, when it's summoned, it actually adds an Innister back from your graveyard. And when it's used as Link Summon, it adds uh, an AI spell, a trap from your graveyard to your hand. So it just recurs cards. So most people don't run, uh, I run three Earths. My reasoning for running three is because um, Island itself is supposed to summon level four or lower. So you need something level four or lower. This is an Earth monster. Meaning that you need the sixth, um, sixth or fifth, whatever, attribute to make your big monster. And because this one can also special summon itself. If I control another, it, 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 it it's the monster. So honestly, you kind of want to see it. It's not as good as the other three of us, but it's definitely one that you do want to see. Uh, three red or fire. Uh, when it's normal summoned, well, when it's actually, I think it's yeah, when it's summoned, it can add a level four or lower. It the monster from deck to hand. Again. With the earth being level four or lower, that's it. that's the main reason why. A lot of times you're missing that one attribute, and this gets it uh, to your hand for you. It has a second effect, which rarely ever comes up. If a Cyber monster battles, I can banish this to destroy my own monster. It's doing damage step. It's very niche. I may have used it like two times, but it does it doesn't even come up a lot, but it can. Then the main searcher, three yellow or light, whatever you want to call it. Um, on summon, it adds an AI spell or trap card from deck to hand. This searches your island, uh, your reborn cards, your draw cards, all that. It can also change your monsters to level four. That's a setup for the for the exceed summons. I don't run exceeds in this build. I used to. I took them out. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much a low monster count if you don't include hand traps. I think it's like 12 monsters or so. That's all you need, though, honestly. And now for all the hand traps. Two draw. That's pretty much just, just a meta call. Uh, draw honestly shuts down a lot of decks. Like, they just can't play play through it. So two draw. Uh, two Ash. My reasoning for playing two Ash is because I run I run all of them at two of so two Ash and two Bell. Reason being, they are hard at once per turn. So I don't really want to draw multiple. Like I want to see it if I see it. If I don't, I don't. But I feel like these are the two best next to draw to run. So those four effect veilers, which uh might honestly be. Next to Ash, the best hand trap out right now. It doesn't worry about chain blocking. You can, it's not a, it's not once per turn. It's just crazy. Like, I feel like Baylor has to be ran. Three DD Crow. Um, DP is everywhere. It's so many graveyard monsters. I just feel like I should run Crow again. Again, one of those hand traps that's, that's not a where once per turn. So, three. And three Emperor. Again, it, the monster count in this deck is so low to where 
either you can fill it up with traps or hand traps. And I just decided to go the hand trap route. Um, I would rather be prepared for going second and just, and just try to stop my opponent with, I believe, 15 hand traps. But that's it for traps slash hand traps. Uh, spells. One eye contact. I've tried to run it too because it's such a good card. It's such a good card, but it's also such a dead card. If you have the field spell in the field zone, you can reveal the field spell in your hand. Put it at the bottom of the card, and then I mean, put it at the bottom of your deck, and then draw three cards. The field spell goes to the bottom of the of the deck, so literally your chance of drawing the field spell again just lowers. And then I'm drawing three cards, so. It's one of those cards that's like really, really powerful. But one is just enough. Uh, one idle reborn. It's basically just your monster reborn that day. But it's, but, it's, but it's also a quick play, so that helps. That's really what it does. It's just a reborn. Gotta have your searchers. Three I meet you's. So with this card here, it is a hard one. Um... You reveal a Cypress monster with 2300 attack. Then you can add um, you can add a add an instant monster from your deck that has the same attribute as, as the monster revealed. The one drawback of this card that a lot of people seem to forget about is that once you do this, you can only use Cypress monster effects for the rest of the turn. That comes up a lot. I've seen a lot of people play the deck and just completely ignore the fact that that happens. And also, if you don't summon the monster that you revealed from your extra deck, you take the attack and, and life point damage, which is always going to be 23. The main card deck that makes the deck run is Nistra Island. Uh, this is literally the heart and soul of the deck right here. If I don't control a monster in my main monster zone, I can special summon and it in Nistra monster level 4 or lower from my hand. One attribute per turn. Well, one of, how do I say it? Each attribute one time. So there is six attributes, so that's essentially six specials per turn. It just like help you link climb, all that kind of stuff. Literally the best card. You wanna see it, so terraforming. Even though uh, yellow can search it out, the link can search it out, you still want to see that card. So three terraforming. I mean, one terraformer. I wish I could have played three. Lord. And then, in out the main deck, uh, sign that mining. You don't really care about your monsters going to the grave because you can just get them back anyway. And it's just, you know, it's a cyber deck, cyber search card. You have to play it. So, that's the main deck. Main deck is a uh, 40. I've always played 40. Extra deck. Uh, is so tight. Um, three dark infants. I've tried it at two, but you need the third one so bad sometimes when you're when you're when you're trying to combo. I want to run two, but you just need it. This is your main starter. When it's summoned, when you well when you when you summon it, you can add the field spell to your hand. And if a cypress monster you control with 2300 attack uses his effect. You can change this effect. It moves itself to the zone that it's pointing to and then changes its uh, type and its attribute. The reason that's so big is because the big link takes different attributes. It has to be different attributes. So usually what you do is you chain one monster, use this, move it to the zone, and call whatever attribute you don't have. Real tip with that, divine. Just, just, just always call that. Easy, easy, easy thing to do. Uh, the one link spider. That's only basically because of Nibiru. Uh, you get nibbed in this deck. The token becomes this. Muscle zone is clear. Keep your combos going. On the reason. Cypress Wicked. Um, this is a definite card. If I had room, I would run two of. This card is so good. It cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. That is huge. When a monster is summoned to it, you can banish a cypress from your graveyard to add a cypress tuner. That's how you search out your uh, wind. 
Like, if I really had to run for this car, I would, I would run too. It doesn't happen often, but you can brick. And just ending, ending on, this, on this by itself can buy you a turn. I had to cut, this, cut the second one for this right here. IP Masquerina. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and break it up to order, but the reason I had to cut it for that is because uh, you need these two. IP and then Abramax. Um, I wasn't running these for a long time. The the seeds must have became this. The second wicked became this. The reason these are needed so bad is because Dro hurts this deck. Like you cannot play through Dro, but if you do get drove, you can go into this combo right here. And honestly, making Abramace within with an IP sometimes just gets you there. Like people have to play and then try to get get around it. So yeah, I had to cut those two for these two. And I don't think I'll ever take these two back out. Uh, next best card, Splash Mage. You pretty much have to run two Splash Mage. One, Splash Mage just does so much for Cypress decks. It brings the Cypress monster back from, from the graveyard. It's just, it just link climb so much. This is one of the ones where, honestly, if I had, if I had room for three, I'd run three. Like, it's, it's such tight space in this extra deck where, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these cards are just so good, but you just can't maximize them. One of my favorite cards in the deck, Fire Phoenix Ignister. It has a weird wonky effect. Uh, when I'm attacking, I can declare his effect. Instead of doing battle damage, I can burn my opponent for the attack of my monster. So it always does like 2300 damage. Um, that comes up a lot as far as like Monsters you can't get a uh, pass, stuff like that. Doing doing damage in time, cause I mean, at 23 is actually a lot to lose in time. Uh, he also has a second effect. I'm assuming because both of them are fire, that's why. But if this if this links on my card gets gets destroyed by a card effect, he can come back during the next standby phase. And he also pops a card when he gets destroyed. That was an effect that. I didn't know it had for a long time, actually, because I am a Yu-Gi-Oh player and I don't read. I only did the burn effect, but that effect does come up a lot. The main guy, the one that everyone knows to stop, um, Dark Templar. This is what sets up the play to your big monster. Uh, when, a, when a monster gets summoned to his zone, you can special summon two of them from your graveyard. So he, he just summoned three, three monsters just for free. When when he destroys a monster, he can spell something from the graveyard. Like it just sets up so many plays. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically how you link climb into this. This is the, this is really your actual boss monster of the deck. Uh, usually I make them four thousand or six thousand. If, if you don't know what it does, it is unaffected by all card effects. It can target a monster on your opponent's field. Destroy it, and then you get a Cypress token. Usually setting up this when it's 4,000 or 6,000 with the negator in, in your graveyard with probably two hand traps is like enough to just like go to game two or three. Uh, these are basically, oh, one more left. Um, the only single, the only non link I run, Wind Pegasus. Pop spell traps up to the amount of initial monsters you control. Uh, that's honestly great by itself. But it has another effect. If one of your cards gets destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can banish this from the graveyard to, to shuffle a card that's on your opponent's side of the field. That effect comes up so much. I feel like people just forget that it's even in, in the grave. It's just... Another one of those good cards that would, if you had room, you would definitely run more. And then I guess the, I don't know, the, the package, the, the Cold Talker package, I guess. Trans Cold Talker, that's been around forever now. Uh, I suppose summon a Link Monster from the grave to the zone it points to. 
Uh, stuff that's cold link can be targeted. And then games plus five, 500. And then the newer one, uh, Access Code Talker. This should not be to effect monsters. It's way too easy to make. Uh, you can target one of the monsters that's, that's used for well, one of the link monsters that's used for it. It gains the attack based, based to the link rating. They can't respond to that. Then it can also banish attributes of link monsters to pop uh, one card on the field. So I guess it's like your next uh, pseudo boss monster, you would say. And yeah, that's the whole deck. Uh, 15 cards and a 40 card deck. And that's